Are you finding that the last piece of your organization puzzle, or maybe the first, is dealing with the stress of paper clutter? Because I know I have been there where there's just so much coming in and I don't know what to do about it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my super simple way to organize and manage and control your paper clutter. No filing cabinets needed. In fact, you need very minimal equipment. And this is a long lasting system that I have used now for many years that keeps keeps my paper clutter under control and allows me to sleep at night. Hello, if this is your first time watching me, my name is Julie. I'm an occupational therapist and as part of my training, I'm very, very focused on environmental impacts to our life. And we all know that we're stuck at home so much more in 2021, but that doesn't mean that the paper clutter can't find us. So I'm really on a mission to make our environments help us rather than hinder us and part of that is tackling paper clutter. I'm also a mom of two little ones and a third one on the way so I know a thing or two about school art projects, extra forms with every extra person that comes into this world. There's a million extra things that enter your life so if this is something that could be helpful to you to keep your life organized, your home nice and clutter free then make sure to keep watching. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe, click that like button and notification bell do all those things and if you need more support I just launched my new three-day Express mini course which has a really awesome full PDF downloadable chock-a-block with things to help express start your organizational journey lots of bonus materials in there so make sure you check out the link down below all right so my first tip is that you need to become aware of the paper clutter I don't know about you but it's that saying of kind of when something surrounds you all the time you absolutely forget that it's even there and it just kind of blends into the background if you really want to take control over paper clutter and just general clutter in your home then make sure that you are becoming aware of how much extra stuff is entering your house on a daily basis how much is junk how much is not actually needed because paper clutter is super sneaky it's one piece here one piece there one art project there no big deal and then the next thing you have a massive pile. I would recommend, as I do in a lot of my videos, that you try and tackle the paper clutter once you've got control over it as quickly as possible. So if you can't tackle it that day, then just once a week going through the mail, going through the brochures, going through the kids art projects, having a plan because otherwise it becomes super overwhelming. But don't worry, I'm gonna show you how I tackle each of these categories so that it never has to get to that point. Also, if you're just feeling overwhelmed in general with clutter, make sure you check out this video that I did about how to banish clutter from your life altogether because that gives a really good generalized view and a lot of good principles of how you can live a clutter-free life in 2021. Okay, so with most problems in life, when you just put a Band-Aid on something, it never really Really solves the source of the problem and the same comes across with paper clutter so what I mean by this is there are ways that you can eliminate paper clutter from even entering your world in the first place I will leave some website links down below of how you can cancel catalogs and I also recommend that you eliminate paper coming into you through the mail as much as possible so bank statements, mortgages, electricity bills, anything that you can get electronically, receipts, anything like that, I would definitely defer to electronic versions of it because over time this is gonna save you a ton of mail coming in and just extra stuff. Make sure that there are settings that on your bank or your loan providers that you can check off to say, I don't wanna waste paper. I've had situations where we do that and we still get mail and that is really frustrating. So see if you can you know, email the company and make sure that they take your name off the list of getting physical mail and if that still doesn't work, then as soon as you get a bill like that, just check what it is, shred it, discard it, do not keep it because you have the electronic copy of it and nowadays that's all you really need to show proof of anything. I would even go so far as depending on what your space situation is like, recipe books, you know, these are paper clutter. If you can get the digital version or if you're feeling overwhelmed by too much stuff right now, maybe 
deferring from getting books, physical books, and rather going for the online version. As in with recipe books, you can really look them up. You can get apps from the people that produce these books a lot of the time. So this is a way to eliminate paper clutter, especially in the kitchen where recipe books usually hang out. And it's a great way to sustain a clutter-free environment. For receipts, what I'd like to do is use an app like Fetch, and I'll have some details down below how you can sign up. But basically, I take a photograph of a physical receipt, so usually with groceries, and it gives me points. So not only do I get points for my receipt or spending money at any shop that I purchase anything from, but it also keeps track of what I bought from that store. If you think that you might need to return something, you can take a physical picture of the receipt, but I know for grocery stores during COVID and where I shop now, they do not accept any returns. So having the receipt is kind of like a waste of time, but I do like to collect the rewards and also just have tracking of my groceries if I ever needed to refer back to them, which Typically, I do not. The other thing that the Fetch app does is it searches through my Amazon receipts. It's all connected and I get points from that too. But this means that everything is paperless. I'm getting, I'm getting points towards Amazon or other online stores and I'm keeping it super clutter free. So something that I speak about a lot in my videos is I advocate to not buy additional storage. So like a storage unit, a house that is probably too big for you or that you think you might need or a house that you just have a room where it just ends up being clutter, uh, even extra, you know, cupboards and cabinets and bookshelves, all this kind of thing. Now I live in a very small space, probably smaller than a lot of people. So it's all relative, but for whatever it is for you, I wouldn't spend extra money storing stuff. I would make the confines of how I live work because I use that as a boundary and a stopgap so that I don't overspend or over clutter my home. The same thing applies with paper clutter that I have found. So no one is denying that you do need to keep physical documents, 100% birth certificates, passports, uh, maybe some license, all sorts of things like that. It's gonna be different for everybody. You're supposed to keep tax documents, I believe for five to 10 years, things like that. There are certain things that are paper that you have to keep. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I think you should limit how much space that you use to store all of the stuff just like everything else so i have an accordion type of file file that i use i'll put a picture up here what a similar type of thing and basically i use that to organize our professional licenses our passports tax documents that we need to keep maybe our car licensing or whatever it is that we do not want to have as a digital copy and this way it's kept in a contained situation where I can't put more in. It's it's as big as it is. I could buy another folder, but I'm trying not to do that. So if you really whittle down the paper that you absolutely have to keep, it's not that much. And something like a birth certificate, you know, is one thin piece of paper. I would really recommend, instead of having a whole big filing cabinet, unless you really have the space for that and that's something you want, I have not needed to purchase one of those and nor am I willing to right now because space is such a commodity for me, but I don't need it. I have this accordion file. We know that our most precious documents live there and you know, that's how we do it. And then to keep that under control, perhaps once a year, maybe even every 18 months, it's not that often, we will go through it and just discard things that are not out of date or obsolete or we don't need them. And then this keeps everything down to a minimum. Or perhaps if I'm adding something to the accordion file, I would do quick a quick scan of what I can kind of discard or shred if there's anything. So a huge source of paper clutter with having children is their artwork and school projects and things like that. And this is a really tough one. I did a video at the end of last year all about the memory books that I have for my kids. And this is where I put like the best of the best artwork. Call me a Scrooge or one sentimental, but I can't keep all of my children's art. Let me know how you manage it. And that is something that 
easily, easily builds up and clutters your home. Not only will it clutter your walls if you put it all over the walls, all over the fridge, uh, but it's gonna clutter the counters, tops. It, it really, really adds up quickly because every week or every day they're coming home with, you know, pages of paintings and paper and all this kind of stuff. So what I do is I usually let that art hang out in our house for a few days and see if they even care about it because you will know very quickly whether they notice. You know, I, my son will come home and he has an art folder and he will show me at the end of the week, I made this and I love this and I do that. And this gives me an idea of things that he's actually, he is personally actually attached to and I'll keep those things. Um, if there's other just pieces of paper with like one scribble on it, like, yes, it's dear to my heart, but you know, it's gotta go. I get a good sense of what is actually valuable to him and then i select a few things not you know not often to put into their memory books which i showed in that video and this really keeps our art to a minimum if and when we move to a larger a larger place in the future i will you know change up how i deal with kids art but i don't think i will go that much more extreme because it's just going to accumulate over time with more and more children and more and more years at school and so i really just be very discerning about which art we keep which ones they love and if they really love something they probably will want to stick it up on the wall or something like that so i have a few pieces that they stick up and we rotate things but if i notice that paper is kind of just being thrown on the floor stepped on ignored crunched that to me is an indication that it's not very valuable to them and I let myself go of the guilt that this is something that we have to keep and kind of drown in. So I highly recommend that you evaluate your space and do the same. Remember two things when it comes to decluttering in general and with paper clutter. It's a process. If you have a whole room full of paper clutter, yeah, it's, it's gonna be a little while before you feel like you have tackled this all. And I want to encourage you that that is okay and and as long as you are dedicating a little bit of time every week or every day to go through some things and just give yourself permission to shred things and let them go. You know, we're obviously very focused on being information conscious and protecting our identities and all this kind of stuff, but that can also keep us stuck shred the paper and discard them so that you feel that your information is safe. But if something is kind of older than five years, 10 years, 20 years, I mean, you really need to evaluate if you still need it. You can also scan things and make them digital. That's obviously an option, but that's also quite time consuming. So really evaluate if you need to keep all of this stuff and work on being current, being up to date and having the most relevant stuff easily accessible where you know where it is, either in some kind of folder or accordion type thing that I was discussing earlier, or maybe in a digital folder on your computer. We go so far as even considering, you know, paper bags or shopping bags, that kind of thing as clutter as well. So we've really reduced the influx of paper bags into our lives since we made it a habit to just take reusable bags with us to the grocery store. Sometimes, you know, we forget or maybe we go to the grocery store like on a whim on the way home because we want something and so we bring in paper bags or if we order some food or something there'll be a paper bag associated with that and usually i keep that i recycle it in the form of a bag for our compost which lives in our freezer and i also use those bags for art projects i've used them for gift wrap <laughs> all these kinds of things so you can get super super creative with paper clutter and that gives it a new fresh life and then you know if you're using it just to protect your surface while your kids are painting or something, you can recycle it guilt-free. Our mail, I don't even bring junk mail into our home. Now, because we live in an apartment, our mailbox is, you know, in the lobby of our building. So I literally sort everything out while I'm there. I don't even allow it to come into our home. It probably cuts down at least like 75% of the mail that we receive and that really helps us. I also try and get in the habit of coming upstairs with our mail, opening it almost immediately, recycling the envelopes, keeping a couple of things that I might need or obviously the important things and dealing with it then and there because that's how you get on top of it, stay on top of it and maintain a clutter-free lifestyle. 
Another thing that I've taken to using is whiteboards or chalkboards for kids to draw. So obviously kids love to draw and they love to experiment and you want to provide a diversity in the type of materials that they are exploring. You know, there's different skills that you need when you're writing on paper with a pen versus like on a whiteboard. But if your children are really into kind of just doodling or practicing their name or you know, it's even just fun to write on a whiteboard. I would highly recommend that you get one because it's so easy just to reuse that over and over again. It creates no clutter and it's still achieving that outlet for letter practice or drawing or all that kind of stuff. I also bought these little electronic boards for my kids for Christmas, which are kind of like the Etch-A-Sketch, but a modern version. And that kind of does the same thing where there's no paper involved and you just erase the picture and start again so i'll leave a link for those down below and then my final tip i can't believe i have so many tips when it comes to <laughs> eliminating paper clutter but it really is an all-encompassing thing is i've spoken about this in my productivity video that i recently posted and it's all about only having one or two notebooks and you know notebooks and pads of paper and post-its and calendars those are all paper clutter as well so don't just think that paper clutter is like junk mail or scraps it's also the books that you have so I only have one notebook like currently and I use that kind of for everything which means I can eliminate a lot of other or paper calendars of is what I've used in the past and this really cuts down and the amount of paper clutter that I have to manage and that's on my desk. If you've made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much. I hope you got value from this, some good ideas to keeping your home clutter free. I think paper is really that cherry on the top that you need in order to have a much less stressful home and you know, home management system. It is definitely something that you have to take control of. If you do need more support, don't forget to download that free mini course. It's a super jam packed bundle, but it's only three videos that you can get through super quickly. It's really fun. And I think it'll provide you with a lot of additional ideas for how to organize your home and set up your life. And then if you need additional support, don't forget to check out the waitlist for my signature course, The Organized Mom. It's a much more in-depth program of how you can manage your life as a whole, especially as a parent and a busy and exhausted mom. Uh, we all need better tips and tricks and time strategies to manage our time and take back control of our life. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell, give this video a big thumbs up if you like videos here to improve your life and your personal development as a parent in a minimal and intentional way. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.